for those of you who think that's a very innovative, progressive place to go, the idea of matching cocktails and food is about as progressive and innovative as putting an olive in a martini or a celery stick in a Bloody Mary. All the way back in the beginning, we were serving food with cocktails from the very beginning. And the cocktails place hasn't always been necessarily next to the main course at dinner, but it has always been as an aperitif, it's been as a digestive, it's been as an eye opener. So it's very important for us to think about it that way. Now I'm gonna just, some basic ideas to think about when you're matching cocktails with food and matching spirits with food. Balance of the cocktail, and we talk about building cocktails with balance, is so important. All right, that balance of fruit and acid, that balance of alcohol, and considering all of those things as you're matching, okay? We urge you to think about flavor and texture. Texture is the single most um, underestimated structural component of the cocktail and of the spirit. And to us, it's very, very simple. Make sure that the cocktail doesn't overpower the food. Make the, sure that the food doesn't overpower the cocktail. And that's what we're talking about texturally. So in the mouth, the richness factor has to be somewhat equal. What we urge you to do is this. Think about your cocktail or your spirit, not as a complement to the food, but as a condiment to the food. It's your salt, it's your pepper, it's your vinegar, it's your ketchup, it's whatever you would add to food to make it taste better. Think about the food, the sauce, the same way you think about a mixer. The food should soften the alcohol, sugar, that the easiest place is dessert. We look at cream. We look at different things like that. We look at shellfish, the raw bar, which is an easy place to begin. Fried foods, because of the grease, an easy place to begin. The easiest place to get people going and take baby steps is at the beginning of the meal or the end of the meal. Let me just say sweet, sour, salt, bitter, and umami, if those are indeed our five basic flavors, and we're still arguing about that case, at least we believe those flavors have very distinct receptors here. The issue is, you don't want one to stick out over the other. Now, let me take it a piece at a time. Sweet. Well, sweet, something everybody likes, but let me throw a food idea out there for you, if you will. Fried food. What do you want when you're a cook and you're frying something? You want the oil as hot as possible, right? Why? Because you don't want the food to take up, or the, the coating or breading or whatever you're using, to take up a bunch of oil. Otherwise, this thing's going to taste greasy. Right? So now ma imagine if you've got some fried food and you're already afraid that it's going to taste greasy and you add a sweet drink next to that. What is that going to make that fried food taste like? Greasier, fried, you know, I mean, it's already you got coating, coating and cloying flavors in your mouth. Now you add oil, yum, yum, okay? <laughs> now, what would you like to have in a situation like that? Now, to Steve's point, now if I think of the cocktail as a condiment to the food, I need to add acid. I need something that's going to make this fried food taste lighter. And we think about some of the things we, let's say on the wine side, add to fried food. I want very crisp, clean, dry white wine. I want champagne with its bubbles that give me the sensation of dryness. So I look towards the drink, the cocktail now, and say, I need to eschew the idea of sweet drink and go to the idea of tart drink to go with this fried food. Salt, salt tends, salty foods tend to take big flavors and buffer them. In particular, saltiness will take a tannic wine, for instance, or a big, powerful, intense whiskey and make it less so. So now I look at food in that way. I've got something salty, I can apply something big and bold. I have something acidic, maybe not so much. Something that's tart, ceviche, things like that. You think of adding big and bold to something that's, like I say, ceviche or, or acid-based, Big and bold is only going to seem really weird and out of balance. So I'm looking at the food first and trying to, to uh, add some element to it from the cocktail that acts as a pleasant condiment to the food. I've got salt in that, uh, in that little, uh, little feller. I've got a lot of umami in that little oyster. So what do I need? I probably need acid to counterbalance the, the salt, to work with the salt, and probably not a lot more other than that, other than the citrus, just like I'd squeeze a lemon or any other fruit on top of that oyster. Why? Because of the acid again, because that would counterbalance the salt, and frankly, oysters are a little umami bombs as well, and acid seems to work well with that much more than tannin does. Acid seems to work with that much more than umami does. So I don't want big old aged whiskeys or aged spirits at that point, probably. Of course they're supposed to work together. Two, I certainly believe, I know all of us believe that food and drink are supposed to go together because it's healthy, because it makes you feel better, because it tastes better, that no food should, should be served without drink, and no drink should be served without food. 
But having said that, maybe I've already, you know, gone down the rabbit hole a little too far in terms of talking about trying to match these interesting little flavors and, and keep it as simple as this. So the idea of matching cocktails and food, it's actually really straightforward. So we know that when we start a meal, when we start with light, light foods, fresh fruits, bright flavors, fishes and ceviches and oysters and raw bar, all that stuff's really easy to match to. That's where we go with our bright, fresh cocktails, our mojitos, our nice, fresh margaritas, that whole idea of the aperitif, that's great. And that's really easy, and that's really most of what we're gonna do when we talk about cocktails and food. But we have lots of other opportunities and lots of other places to go. Think about the idea of matching cocktails to an entire meal, which is something that we're doing a lot of these days. This idea of, of you know, we always used to do wine dinners, now we're doing it with cocktails too, and that's great. So the ideas are very similar. And really what we're gonna do is the same thing, the same way that we build a cocktail menu. So we'll build from light to richer to our full bodied. We're gonna do that as we go through the meal. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. And take what the chef does, and we're gonna match to that. So we got a lot of opportunities. We'll take our spirits. We have light, fresh spirits, our, our white goods. We have an opportunity to do our, our bright matching with fresh citrus and things like that. But we're gonna get into heavier foods. We're gonna get into our main course, our, our poultries and our steaks and our lambs. And we have to find an opportunity to do cocktails there that have more richness to them as well. It's really very, it's as simple as stepping up the textures of your mixers. So you're gonna step up and do things like pomegranate, like heavier fresh berries and things like that. Using more sweeteners like agave nectar and things like that. Basically adding more layers, adding more depth, adding more complexity to the drink will allow it to stand up as the food Food starts to take that jump up. So if we add things like, like maybe we want to do some fresh herbs, like some rosemary or some thyme, things like that. Those are great opportunities to step up the texture of our cocktails and do more in terms of where we're going to go as the food gets heavier. And then as we get into dessert, we can do lots of things in terms of bringing sweetness and richness and, and making cocktails that'll not only match with dessert, but also be dessert. Dessert. Dessert is a slam dunk. I mean, aperitif is, is easy, but dessert's even easier because sugar and cream both soften alcohol. Whether you're going to do it straight or in a snifter or you want to do up drinks, no matter what you put at dessert, you can't lose. You can do drinks as dessert. When somebody, I mean, just in the restaurant, for those of you who are in the restaurant side of the business, just get people in your restaurant to stop thinking coffee. To stop thinking that when somebody says, it's time for dessert, let's get the dessert menu. Oh, I'm too full. That's what they always say. I don't want a dessert menu. Well, how about coffee? What do you mean, how about coffee? How about Irish coffee? <laughs> you know, how about an after dinner drink? How about an after dinner drink as dessert? Because you may not have room to eat dessert, but you certainly have room to drink dessert, and you've never had a dessert the way I can do it behind the bar. So I guess the idea here is that not only is it the easiest time, but if you're taking baby steps and just starting to get your customers into this thing, dessert's the easiest time because everybody's prepared for it already. They expect something in a snifter to come around at that time. They expect something a little stronger. They expect something a little sweeter. What I would say to you is just remember this, dessert is your last opportunity to make a lasting impression upon your guests.